Hello everyone, EB the Original Master here, and you know what it is, it's Sunday, April the 2nd, and you know what that means, I finally watched Krusty Catering and Snoozy Loos from Spongebob, and boy were these episodes really fun to watch. I enjoyed every last bit of these two episodes. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, so yeah, you know the deal. Um, Sundays, I sit in the same location watching these episodes and giving you guys my honest opinions about them. So yeah, I just watched Snoozy Lose and Krusty Catering on line, and both of these episodes were pretty hilarious. So, um, Snoozy Lose, um, it began with a really rough, began with a really boring start. Where we got Squidward, um, he, obviously, he can't sleep. So, basically, the reason why he can't sleep is because that he has a audition at the Bikini Bottom Philharomic, where he is going there for an audition, and then he can't go, I mean, he, he has to go to it, but he's very tired. And it, according to the episode, um... He hasn't slept in three days. I mean, so what? Why? Why haven't you slept in three days, Squidward? Are you, were you, is it because you're nervous about this audition that you can't sleep or whatnot? I mean, come on now. Three days of no sleep and you have this big audition that you have to go to. So then we get um, a really pointless scene of SpongeBob and Patrick drinking soda and burping really loud at the middle of the night. I mean, seriously, they're supposed to be in bed sleeping. What makes you think SpongeBob and Patrick are just going to stay up the half of the night drinking soda and just burping it out really loud? I mean, that was really weird. Then, um, Squidward tells them to be quiet, and then Patrick congratulates Squidward for not sleeping for three days. Really? And then, um, so Spongebob and Patrick, um, understands that Squidward needs to go to this audition, so SpongeBob agrees with it. He suggests Squidward to go out and take a walk. So Squidward goes out to take a walk in the middle of the night. He then sees um, these. He then sees everybody else sleeping. He finds um, these worms sleeping. He then f goes nearby a TV store where there's like sheep like jumping over a fence and whatnot while he's walking. And then he ends up walking into SpongeBob's place instead of his. And then SpongeBob, Patrick, and Gary are watching television while Squidward just falls asleep on the middle of SpongeBob's floor. And then SpongeBob decides to use Squidward as a blanket for him to fall asleep. The next day arrives. Um, Patrick wakes up, freaks out that he sees his rug. And then SpongeBob tells him that he, that that um, he's in his place, where Patrick then proceeds to play around in his rug, which I thought was really really ridiculously stupid and crazy, but kind of hilarious at the same time. So this woman, Patrick, then comes up with an idea to use Squidward as a puppet for him to get to his audition. So this woman, Patrick, are literally inside of Squidward's body to control him to his audition. So there's like some really hilarious moments of the scene where SpongeBob and Patrick are controlling Squidward inside of his brain to get him to his audition. So we got everybody freaking out about Squidward. There's like this one part where, where, where they knocked over this lady, like she like flew into the air, then she like blew up. I mean, I don't know how that occurred. I mean, how can you automatically blow up when someone knocks you over? I mean, were they trying to add the humor or were they just doing that for entertainment purposes? I think that was for entertainment purposes. Then they got stopped by a police officer where he said, hey, this is a no dancing zone, so you can't dance over here. So then we got all of these surrounding characters. And surprisingly, the hash slinging slasher from the Graveyard Shift episode from the second season made a cameo. Yes, the guy who was the hash slinging slasher was actually there in that episode as a cameo, which was pretty well, which was pretty well occasionally. So they arrive on the bus, and then they made it to Squidward's audition. So, um, the, I think the judge for the audition had so many bad performances, um, so that's when SpongeBob and Patrick arrived at the audition where they decided to play on Squidward's clarinet. So, since SpongeBob and Patrick are controlling Squidward, they made him play the clarinet very, very well. And then, um, so... They, they, they perform the song, 
And then Squidward realizes when Patrick are inside his body, he tries to get him out. Squidward then vomits SpongeBob and Patrick out of his body, where he proceeded to play his clarinet by himself, which resulted very terribly. This scene was very funny. So Squidward's clarinet was so bad, like it then showed these real life locations where these birds flew away of how bad Squidward's clarinet playing was. It showed like these buildings crashing into each other. I, th I was like, please don't tell me they're trying to do a 9-11 joke. If they, if they, you know, if they actually did show the, the World Trade Center getting blown up, then that would have been really, really disrespectful. Then at the ending of the episode of Snoozy Lose, they're, they're on the bus. Squidward then finds a clone Squidward. Oh yeah, here's what I forgot to mention. So, Spongebob and Patrick decides to create another Squidward to roam around Bikini Bottom, and it turned out to be that that Squidward, the, the Squidward that Spongebob and Patrick created, turned out to be that he was the one who did the wonderful performance. So then we get the, the, the clone Squidward, like, playing on, like, no, so he then grabs one of the buildings and uses it as a clarinet. Everybody started clapping for him, ending Snoozy Lose. Snoozy Lose was a pretty funny episode. It started out really weak, then the, then the humor increased dramatically. This episode was really funny. I enjoyed it. And I actually enjoyed it. I actually give this episode a 9 out of 10. This episode was that funny. I'm actually impressed. So yeah, Snoozy Lose gets a 9 out of 10. Now let's move on to a sister episode, Krusty Catering. Now Krusty Catering... Uh, I said Catering, I'm sorry. Krusty Catering... The episode begins at, it, so basically this whole episode is Spongebob, Mr. Krabs, Patrick, and Squidward doing a catering for a kid's birthday party. So there's a lot of kids, there, so there's a, so it's a kid's birthday party, the kids are having fun, and then so, so Squidward comes out of a cart with the word Krusty Catering on it, with him delivering the kids their Krabby Patties, and then since the kids are very, very rude, and they're, they're crazy and whatnot, then... Things does not turn out to be as well. So then the kids start um, freaking out. Like, there's like this one kid who's like stood there screaming at the top of his lungs. And that, that just had me dying. And then, so, yeah. Then SpongeBob, like, used, transformed himself as a trampoline, I guess. So the kids were like jumping on the trampoline made from SpongeBob. And then um, there's like this one kid who's freaking out over a birthday cake. I want my birthday cake. That that was the running gag of this entire episode of that one kid looking up for Mr. Krabs, screaming that he wants a birthday cake. I mean, it, it kind of got stale at some occasions, but it, it actually kept this entertainment humor about this one kid freaking out over a birthday cake. So the kid's birthday party turns into a living hell where the kids are are causing Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward to freak out a little bit. So then Patrick decides himself as a clown. He then makes all these balloon animals. And then there's like this one particular customer who came to inspect the crust, to inspect the catering where they provide high quality catering. So out of nowhere, we get this really weird buffed up lady. I mean, she had a really weird design. I mean, her, her, her stomach is like all the way up to here. She had a really odd looking design and I don't know what were the writers thinking or the or the character designers who designed the characters for this episode. I don't know why they made her this design, but it was highly weird. So then <coughs> excuse me. So then she comes telling SpongeBob Mr. Krabs and all the other characters that um they're having like this catering where she expects high catering for her little restaurant. So she has a restaurant it's not the Krusty Krab, though. It's like this jewelry-shaped, treasure chest-shaped restaurant where SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs, Patrick, and Squidward are going there to get to get paid big money. So they then get to, so they then dress up in tuxedos from Squidward. So obviously Squidward inked everyone, making the, the tuxedos and everything. So they go to this high-quality restaurant where they're going to be catering there. So. Things turned out to be really well. It turned out to be great at first where SpongeBob started serving these Krabby Patties. They're not Krabby Patties. They're actually meat. No, they're patties, but not but not Krabby Patties. I mean, the burgers. I mean, SpongeBob then makes these patties with these jewels inside of them in which, in which Patrick serves to the customers. So the customers eat the, the jewel meat patties, which they enjoy. 
And then Patrick then makes it worse by keep complaining that it was his. So he then tries, then he then attacks everyone. He starts grabbing all their food and start eating it. And then yes, it it doesn't turn out it doesn't doesn't turn out smoothly. So yeah, that's this entire episode. Sp SpongeBob, Patrick, Mr. Krabs, and Squidward catering for this restaurant. Then Squidward finds this group of musicians playing music where Squidward wanted to join along with the band. But every time Squidward joined in... No, 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 no. I, let me rephrase that. I'm sorry, you guys. Let me rephrase that. I'm sorry if my dialogue is not the greatest. I don't write a script. It's because that's not how I am with these reviews. So what I, what I meant to say was that... So Squidward saw this, this, music, this musical group where one of them was playing a clarinet. So he just grabbed that one group member and just throws him out. And then he grabs his own. He grabs the clarinet that he, that the musician was playing, and then he starts playing on his play, starts playing on his clarinet, which causes the musicians the the to like to like walk away from Squidward, obviously because he's playing very badly. Then um the ending for this episode, Mr. Krabs finds that annoying kid who keeps screaming for his birthday cake. In fact, there's like this one scene where Mr. Krabs kicked him out, like. Like, there's, like, four different windows where the kid kept screaming that he wants his birthday cake. There's a crowd like, closed the blinds and whatnot. So he tries to get this kid away where the kid looks up to him as a father. So the kid finds this waterbed. He starts jumping on it. Mr. Krabs tells him to get off of the waterbed. The waterbed explodes. Water flows everywhere. SpongeBob cleaning. Everybody freaks out. And that's basically the ending of this episode. Everybody leaves the 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 restaurant because of the water because of the flood there's like there's like a raging river flood and then spongebob then uses the the kids as a trampoline again then we got that one kid flying with the balloons at the very ending of the episode and then we get this very nice sunset at the end and that was crusty catering crusty catering this episode was was actually funny really funny that the fact that this was, oh yeah god yeah, really funny episode. Again, I'm very, very sorry if the dialogue was weird. I'm, I'm, I highly, very sorry. It's because that I did not provide the information that I wanted to provide, but I ended up correcting myself throughout the review. So again, if you guys think this review was kind of off topic and weird, I highly apologize for that. I promise I'll make my next review a lot better. <clears throat> So anyways, Krusty Catering gets a 9 out of 10, the same rating as Snoozy Lose. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my review for Snoozy Lose and Krusty Catering from Spongebob. I'll provide the link of the episode in the description below. Again, I did not see this episode on Kiss Cartoons. For some unknown reason, that website isn't working on my computer, so I had to use a different website. But it doesn't matter, It's still the episode is still online. It's actually on Nickelodeon.com. You know, I'll I'll just put the Nickelodeon link in the description because it's because it's the same episode. It's the same episode. Doesn't matter what doesn't matter what website you're using. It's the it's the same same style episode, same episodes, but on a different website. So yeah, both Snoozy Lose and Crossy Catering gets a nine out of ten in my book. Really funny episodes. Oh yeah, I want to mention one more thing in Crossy Catering. So this one scene in the episode where this one kid was, oh yeah, it was actually the kid who was demanding for the birthday cake. So he, so there was like a plankton pinata. There was a pinata shaped like plankton where he was trying to hit, but then he ended up hitting Mr. Krabs, which he cracked open and money came out. That was a very funny moment. And that's all I wanted to mention. Again, sorry for the weird dialogue for this review. I apologize for that. I'll make my next review a lot high quality. Thanks for watching you guys. Peace out. <clears throat>